It's 1993, a year for iconic releases in cinema, including Spielberg's groundbreaking masterpiece, Jurassic Park. Hey! And also, Hot Shots Part 2. <gasps> I mean, this was considered a cutting edge video game in 93. Now, 93 was just one year after the LA riots. So bear that in mind as we analyze director Marco Brambia's somewhat reactionary but highly entertaining smash hit, Demolition Man, starring Sylvester Stallone. No, no, hold on, brother. I'm pretty sure you must have screwed up the director's name. Paul Verhoeven directed Demolition Man. Wrong again! Marco Brambia is the guy's name and his IMDb page is curiously short. Whoa! Apparently he worked with Kanye. That was before Kanye started collaborating with Mel Gibson, you little shit. Bro, why are you eyeballing me? Don't you have some kind of cruel insult to drop before we get into the movie breakdown? You know, maybe tell me I look like Dr. Phil if he ate all his guests. Are you mad about something, Barry? Well, to be honest, I guess I'm a little disappointed that you photoshopped me into that Facebook post. Oh, you're still butthurt about that, huh? Marilyn happened to see it. Marilyn. Oh, is that the Walgreens cashier you were trying to ball? Oh, come on. She wasn't going to bang you anyway, bro. You're broke as hell and you got a face like a baboon's ass. But we can talk about it if you want to, Barry. I'm here for you. Something's up with you, and I don't like it. You sound different. You're paranoid, bro. You know damn well paranoia causes weight gain, so try to be a little more trusting. Yeah, swipe. Anyway, welcome to the future, a time dominated by megacities and a so-called cursed Earth. In the third millennium, the world changed. Climate, metals, all were in upheaval. The Earth transformed into a poisonous, scorched desert known as the Cursed Earth. Now, according to the director's commentary, Cursed Earth is just a euphemism for Kingman, Arizona. And I think that's unfair. Yeah, but we're not worried about the dystopian parts of this filmic world. The bulk of this movie takes place far away from both Kingman, Arizona and the hyper-urbanized Northeast U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more like it. Meet Lanina Huxley, Orwell Babylon! I find this lack of stimulus to be truly disappointing. Things don't happen anymore. We've taken care of all that. Have a peachy day, Lieutenant. Be well. She's a future cop with nothing to do because her beat is, uh, probably somewhere near Santa Barbara, California, where no one can be charged with a crime because they're too rich. To make matters worse, she's got to share an office with Rob Schneider. Greetings, Erwin. Lovely Lenina. Everyone is painfully polite, and even cursing is considered a capital offense. Sanctimonious asshole. Lenina Huxley, you are fined one half credit for a sort of boche violation of the verbal morality. Fortunately, the Santa Barbara Police Department teams her up with John Joseph Spartan Dread. He's a fellow future cop who hails from, uh, uh, I'm thinking Jersey. What would you say if I called you a brutish fossil, symbolic of a decayed era, gratefully forgotten? I don't know. Thanks. Hang on. Did you say this guy's name is John Spartan? Well, I mean, part of his name is John Spartan. Anyway, J.J. Spartan Dread's mouth is even filthier than that of, uh... Lenina, Scientology, Hopewell, Huxtable, whatever. Shit. You're a damn good fly. But he also fails to practice proper hygiene. Germs. Look, I don't know if you guys know it, but you're, uh, you're out of toilet paper. Hey. <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy, but the place where you're supposed to have the toilet paper, you got this little shelf with three seashells on it. <laughs> He doesn't know how to use the three seashells. <laughs> yeah, so what's your theory on the whole three seashells thing? Easy. After you piss, you wipe your hands on the shells to sterilize any germs. 
The joke is that in the future, everyone who can afford to live in Santa Barbara has an eating disorder. So no one is having proper bowel movements anyway. Nah, I don't think that's right, bro. I think Stallone even mentioned in an interview that you use the shells like, uh, little tiny shovels, you know? Disgusting! Well, you've been using Burger King sacks because you're too cheap to buy toilet paper. That's pretty disgusting, too. If you've watched this movie at any point in the past 10 years, you'll know that Demolition Man is oddly half-correct about a number of predictions, including Arnold Schwarzenegger's foray into politics. I have, in fact, perused some newsreels from the Schwarzenegger Library, and that time that you took that car... Hold it. The Schwarzenegger Library? Yes, the Schwarzenegger Presidential Library. The alleged development of self-driving cars. Self-drive on. Self-drive engaged. Zoom sessions. And of course, the proliferation of sad, unfulfilling internet sex. Bro, you saying you'd turn that down? Yeah. At this point, I'd review another Michael Bay Bruckheimer movie if it meant I got to helmet bang Sandy Bullock. Yeah, we managed to enrage at least three viewers. That's like half of the Armageddon fan base. Hey, look at this stupid ass comment. There's a reason why this channel only has eight subscribers. Well, that's a fair point, jackass. And here's another fair point. There's a reason why you're a 35 year old virgin. Besides, at the time of this recording, we're up to 11 subscribers. Thank you very much. Okay, so the overall messaging in Demolition Man sounds reasonable enough at first blush. John Spartan, this display of barbaric behavior was unacceptable even in your time. Yeah, but it worked. The main anxiety is that in the future, society will grow soft and unresilient, thereby creating the requisite gap within which violent pathologies are allowed to fester and metastasize unchecked. Hey, that's a pretty sweet line there, chat GPT. Oh, you want me to dumb it down for you? It's the whole, we need to have a few assholes around in order to keep all the other assholes in check debate. Hey, I remember that movie. Matt Damon! Remember that, Barry? Remember how he kept saying that the whole time? Uh, could you flitter just a little bit to your right, please? Uh, why? Eh, no reason. Anyway, reactionary or not, I'll just say it. This is a fun movie. Whoa, whoa. Why aren't you shitting all over this one like you did for the Michael Bay movie? You losing your edge, bro? I'm not losing shit. This movie may not be perfect, but it's fun and satirical. And unlike Armageddon, it doesn't collapse into cheap kitsch and melodrama. I mean, believe it or not, Stallone manages to deliver some humor in this movie. Oh. This is fantastic. You guys got to try oh, this. Oh, my. Rap. This is a rap burger. Director Marco Brambia even leaves room for 90s comic Dennis Leary to give us his tight five. I like to read. I'm into freedom of speech and freedom of choice. I'm the kind of guy who likes to sit in a greasy spoon and wonder, gee, should I have the T-bone steak? As I want high cholesterol. I want to eat bacon and butter and buckets of cheese, okay? Hey, what happened to that guy anyway? Burr, he's still active. He's just bald now and mostly podcasts. Hang on. Why did you forget to call the ad break? You never forget to call the ad break. Time to get paid! Huh. Must have slipped my mind. Today's movie breakdown is sponsored by Grayman's Rascal Mobility Scooter, the ultimate name in luxury. Oh God, don't they run this ad on RLTV? Listen, we're starting to attract some older viewers who actually have money to burn, and you're gonna blow it if you don't start acting a little more endearing and camera friendly. Well, hello there, Silver Foxes of YouTube. Bankrupt Barry knows that getting older isn't all that it's cracked up to be. I mean, they don't call me Bankrupt Barry for nothing. I, I never should have invested in that goddamn Juicero Kickstarter. And I know that now. You're blowing it, kid. You're blowing it. Dear viewer, remember, you're better than those other old farts in your bingo group. I mean, you made it this far, didn't you? Why shouldn't you own one of these $30,000 shopping carts? 
I mean, that's, that's essentially what it is. Grayman's Rascal has all the top features, including the self-warming seat, dual airbags, a built-in coupon scanner for wasting the time of younger shoppers, a spare box of adult diapers in case of emergencies, and an ultra-high-dev screen that's permanently tuned to Sean Hannity. Yo, Barry, tuck in that big-ass gut and tell them what to do if they can't afford the Rascal. Yeah, fuck it. Buy one anyway. You'll be dead soon and your ungrateful kids can pay it off. They probably don't even bother to call you for Mother's Day, do they? Admit it! The promo code is Gushing Granny! <laughs> I can't believe you actually read it! God, you're gullible! Game on! So, other than Wesley Snipes vandalizing this snobby museum, very little happens in this movie. There's a lot of product placement for Taco Bell. Look again, bro. I think you're remembering it wrong. Your tone is quasi facetious, but you do not realize that Pizza Hut was the only restaurant to survive the franchise wars. Huh. I'll be damned. But I was right about everybody in Santa Barbara having an eating disorder, except for John Joseph Spartan Dread. Enjoy your meal, sir. Good thing I'm hungry. Now, eventually, JJ gets sent to the penalty box for fighting too many black guys. Ernie also tries to have one of those foam parties in the Chief's favorite police cruiser. But what really pisses off the department is his excessive cussing. Thanks a lot, you shit So the SBPD sentences J.J. Dread Pirate Spartan to death upon the cursed earth of Kingman, Arizona! Guilty! That's charged. And uh, to make matters worse, they send Rob Schneider along for the ride. Fortunately, that lovable old man from The Walking Dead breaks Stallone and Schneider free of their prison transport. <laughs> oh, Lord! <laughs> you have blessed us indeed! Yes, that's really him. The first challenge for our heroes is escaping Kingman to complete some kind of Saw-inspired obstacle course. And now that they've passed the obstacle course, this dynamic duo heads for, uh, Manhattan maybe, possibly Boston. Due to a police shortage, J.J. Spartan Dread gets to trade his death sentence for a gun, a badge, a giant novelty codpiece, and a Tesla motorcycle that never works. I knew you'd say that. I knew you were going to say that. Crime in the Northeast is out of control. My fellow judges, have we forgotten the lessons of history? However quickly these block wars can be contained, it's clear that they're becoming an epidemic. And so J.J. Spartan Dread gets his kicks by abusing the citizenry. Happy motoring. Meanwhile! Lenina Huxley Orwell Babylon 5 has driven all the way from Santa Barbara to have some more helmet sex with J.J. Spartan Dread. Whoa, whoa, slow down there, Mr. Belvedere. That is not Sandra Bullock. I think it might be Kate Hudson. Where did you buy this DVD? I don't see how that's relevant. Uh, was it a country whose name rhymes with Thailand? See, that's none of your damn business. Hey, could you hold still a minute? Oh, go to hell, Fatberry. You hold still. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Anyway, halfway through the film's second act, we start to understand that Demolition Man suffers from an identity crisis. Suddenly, Rob Schneider's jokes land about as well as his prison transport. Let me crush him, Paul! Excuse me, we're not together. <laughs> hey, hey, wh why are you taking off his clothes? 
We don't have time for this. Look, I'm no Rob Schneider fan, but if I'm being honest, it's tough to imagine anyone funny enough to make these garbage lines work. Sorry, guys, I'm getting nowhere with your terminal. But I fixed the microwave. You want some popcorn? Is this a bad time? Oh, shit. Did I mention J.J. Spartan Dread has a brother? Have a brother? Yeah, and he gave him a DUI. You let me judge my own brother. The brother is Armand Asante. And he chews more scenery than Jim f***ing Carey. I'm fear. You want chaos? I'm the chaos. You want a new beginning? Yeah. I am the new beginning! The rest of this movie plays out like a buddy cop drama set in the future, with Schneider and Stallone avoiding tough scrapes with rival cops. Yeah, along with Armand Asante's big-ass murder robot. What's that, Mr. Fly? You say that the only problem with killing Rob Schneider is that it always happens too late? Yes, Mr. Fly, you're absolutely right. It's like that famous quote by Emile Chiron. What's that, Mr. Fly? You say you're sorry for describing me as a fat, pathetic loser who smells like Andre the Giant's beer farts. Well, that's all right, Mr. Fly. I forgive you. Hey, Fly, what do you think about the ending of Demolition Man? First, old Spartan J.J. Dredd drops his own brother from the Statue of Liberty's skull. Court's adjourned. Yes, Fly, that's correct. There is a nice thematic echo between Wesley Snipes' frozen skull exploding and J.J. Spartan Dredd's brother falling from the statue's exploded head. That's a very astute observation. Ha! Huh, that's a good joke, Fly. Rob Schneider could learn a thing or two from your delivery. Who are you talking to, Barry? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, but, but you're dead. I killed you. Who, him? See, that's just a mechanical body double, Barry. Did you honestly think I'd let you drop an anvil on me? You silly bitch. Yeah, body double? Did you spend our ad money on a goddamn mechanical fly? You son of a bitch. Take it easy, Barry. I think it's time you stop flapping those sugary gums. Uh, so what's that controller you got there and your filthy little hooks? What, this? This, Barry, is just the remote control for the trap door. Trap door? Yeah, well, who the f*** are you supposed to be, smartass? Kevin McAllister? We don't have a trap door because we... Yes, <coughs> why? They can see my gut! <coughs> I mean, overall, it's not that bad. More of a dry heat. Holy shit! Barry was right! My little ass legs are totally sanitized!